On today's episode of I Believe Now What, we are going to talk about how to find a church. Whether you are a brand new Christian who is looking for a church home, or maybe you're a seasoned Christian and you simply moved, or maybe it's time for you to find a new church, that is what we're going to talk about today. And honestly, this is something I feel I have a lot, of, a lot of experience on just because of my job. If you did not know, I am in the United States military, and I have to move roughly every three years. And in that, I have to find a church. So I'm going to pretty much give you everything that I have learned over my 17 years of military service so far in finding a church, and I pray that this is helpful for you. Well, without any further ado, let's get into this week's episode. Hello, everybody. My name's Tim Perko, and you're listening to I Believe. Now what? Welcome back, everybody. I hope you're having a wonderful week out there. If this is your first time here, I Believe Now What is a podcast that is just geared towards exactly that. We want to give you the now what. At what comes after that moment you decide to become a Christian. That's what we want to talk about. We do Bible studies. We do topical studies. We talk about different current events from a Christian world point of view. And just like today's episode, we go over just things that are generally in need of the Christian or maybe questions that we have. And this is a big one, and I'm surprised we have not done an episode on it yet, but how to find a church. Now, number one, I want to say, before you think I'm just some random guy, if you've never listened to me before... Uh, just talking about how to find a church, man, you've probably been in this in church your entire life and been at the same one. Well, so I have been in the military the last 17 years of my life. And in that, I have to move roughly every three years, sometimes sooner, sometimes a little bit later, but roughly every three years, I'm, I'm picking up my stuff, I'm moving, and I have to find a new church. And my wife and I, over these years, have really honestly developed kind of like a system. We've made a lot of mistakes along the way, and we've learned a lot of lessons. And that's essentially what I'm doing in this episode is giving you those lessons that I've learned when trying to find a church so you don't repeat the same mistakes that I've made. Now, whether you are a brand new Christian who's looking for a church, you're a seasoned Christian who's thinking about switching, or maybe you're coming back from the whole coronavirus thing, if you're listening this way off in the future, uh, but maybe you came back from that whole coronavirus thing and you want to get back into church, but maybe you don't want to go to the same one that you were looking for. That's what we want to talk about in this episode today. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and get into it. So number one and number two, and we're going to start with two right off the bat, because these are honestly, they're pretty obvious, but a lot of people actually forget about this. I've done that, but they've done this before, especially when I was a newer Christian. Number one, we need to constantly stay in our Bible. And this isn't just, you know, looking up specific verses based on the church, but just stay in your Bible in general. The more we read our Bible, the more we understand God's intent, and the better we are going to be able to find a good church and know what lines up biblically with a church. The litmus test for finding a church should always be based on the Bible. Do they line up with the Bible? And most importantly, don't just listen to what they're telling you and trying to feed into you, but listen to the Holy Spirit in your life, letting you know, based off of what you've learned and read in the Bible, whether or not this church is a good church or not. And that kind of leads me into number two, and that's prayer. Prayer needs to be bathed throughout this entire process of searching through it for a church. You need to be praying before, during, and even after your search. Because you never know what the Holy Spirit might show you through that prayer, what God wants to show you through this prayer. Pray in that process. The book of James talks about praying for wisdom. That's a guaranteed answer prayer right there. If we pray for wisdom and we honestly are asking with no doubt inside of our hearts and we are praying in absolute faith, God will grant us wisdom. That's Like I said, that's a guaranteed answer prayer right there. So pray for wisdom with zero doubt inside your heart. Uh, when you're looking for a new church, and God is going to grant that, and I, I can truly attest to that for sure. Okay, number three, number three, and this one is, this is kind of for the Christians who've been Christians for a little bit. Look for that safety net of yours. Maybe you have grown up in a Baptist church or a Methodist church or whatever denomination you want to say, you genuinely, genuinely, generally, that's the better word, generally know what that denomination preaches. So you kind of already have an idea of what they believe. And then the next stuff comes is kind of the nuances. But if you know what a denomination is pretty much all about, usually based off of a lot of secondary issues, then you know that you're going to be comfortable in your own skin there. And this can trip up some people because, I mean, 
let's face it, uh, I, I have been to Baptist churches, I have been to charismatic churches, I have been to non-denominational churches, I've seen a variety of different things, and I kind of know now, based off of what secondary issues, where I kind of draw a line where I'm like, okay, you know what, well, I don't believe this is a salvation issue, uh, I, I just, you know, you're, you're, and I'm just going to throw a random example out there, but you know, maybe the church is allowing people to talk in tongues. I have a different view than that church does on that. And that honestly becomes a distraction now. It's probably best that I just don't attend that church so I can stop distracting myself uh, from all these other secondary doctrines and maybe find a denomination that lines up with what I believe. Now, what I do want to say, and I want to put a little asterisk next to this, don't be afraid to ever go outside of that safety net. Just see what some other churches are about, because you never truly know unless you go. If you are a charismatic or a Pentecostal and you've never been to a Baptist church, you know, don't knock it until you go, and vice versa. If you're a Baptist dude, don't go to a uh, don't knock, you know, maybe a more charismatic Calvary Chapel type church until you actually go there and see what they're all about. Don't be afraid to actually get outside your comfort zone. Now, obviously, if there are secondary issues that are just major distractions, then yeah, you probably want to cross that church off your list. But as long as, number one, they have the primary doctrines correct, that's talking about Jesus Christ, his deity, the Trinity, these essential uh, Christian doctrines that are all lined up off the good news of Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross, as long as it's they're preaching that correctly and it is lined up off the Bible. And if you want me to do a whole episode on that, by the way, one day, just, hey, hit us up on social media, let me know, and we'll, we'll go through that. Maybe you don't have a good idea what that is. But essentially, as long as they line up correctly on what the gospel truth is, then everything else is kind of secondary and tertiary after that. Now, so we talked a little bit about denominations. Now, maybe you're a newer Christian. You have no idea about any of these denominations. I do want to point you to a resource, and that resource is called Ready to Harvest, and it can be found on YouTube. This is a gentleman who makes YouTube videos, and they are some of the most neutral videos I've ever seen. When I say neutral, I mean this is, uh, he is not giving his opinion whatsoever. He is literally reading church's statement of faiths, what they believe, and he just goes over denominations, and he will go through and explain these denominations, what they believe, uh, why they believe what they believe, and he'll pull up the verses that they use to reference why they believe what they believe. Uh, so that's, once again, Ready to Harvest on YouTube. I highly suggest you check it out. I've learned a lot by watching that guy, and I've actually sent it to some of my buddies who come from different denominations that I am not familiar with, and they watched it and they're like, wow, that's actually a hundred percent correct. He perfectly analyzed us. And and I know the denominations that I was a part of before he perfectly analyzed them as well. So once again, that is ready to harvest. You can find him on YouTube. And he, like I said, he will explain to you these denominations. If you don't know what it's about, maybe you start your search off and you see this church is a, uh, Baptist church or something. And you want to look up what a Baptist church is. He, he has a whole bunch of different videos, and not just on Baptist churches either. He does Baptist, he does Methodist, Church of God, uh, Church of Christ, all these, de so many denominations that I didn't even know were out there, he goes over and talks about, and it's honestly a, a really, really awesome tool, and now I'm kind of using this as a promo form, but if you don't know what a particular denomination is about, and you're thinking about going to that church, I highly suggest you check out that YouTube. Once again, ready to harvest. All right, next, now that you kind of got, we got the denomination stuff out of the way, next thing we want to do is let's start narrowing down our search. Now, one good way is using the resources we have today, and that is the internet. You can Google search, you can use Facebook. Many churches have Facebook pages or have websites, and what they will do is they will place their statement of faith on that website or maybe in a document on their Facebook page, and you can look up what that church actually believes. This will come in a form of saying uh, either it would be a statement of faith, it might be a section that says about us or what we believe or what we teach, and you can go in there and actually read what they believe. Some of the things to look at is, number one, read that. 
read it thoroughly, read it all the way through, make sure that what they teach, believe, whatever the fact may be, that it lines up with the Bible. If they list verses next to their statements, which I really think is a good thing, I find it kind of shady when churches don't do that, but if they list verses next to all the statements that they're making, look up those verses. And don't just look up that specific verse, look it up in context, read before, read after, make sure what they are saying they believe and the verse that they're mentioning is actually talking about the subject they're talking about. And I know that can sound kind of deceiving, but obviously there's multiple interpretations for different verses, but there is one true context I truly believe when it comes to every single passage inside the Bible. And that's something that you need to rely on the Holy Spirit on and pray about as you go over. Now, obviously not all churches are going to have a website. There are some smaller churches out there. The church that I preach at, we actually just recently now got a Facebook going because we didn't have a website or anything like that. It was simply word of mouth. The same kind of people were going there forever. Uh, and we decided to go ahead and make a Facebook page. But the point being is not every single church is going to have some type of social media website or something like that where you can easily access. In those cases, maybe you feel led to go there, check it out. Don't be afraid to go there just because they don't have a website. In those cases, you kind of got to stick over step over the whole statement of faith and go straight to the visit. But when you visit, then you can ask them, you know, what is our church's, this church's statement of faith? What does this church believe in the primary doctrines? And chances being, they will probably have some type of document or something ratified that generally states what they believe, teach, etc. along those lines. So like I said, you'll have to skip the internet search to do that and go straight into a visit, but don't be afraid to do that either. Some of the best churches, like I said, the church that I'm preaching at right now, they they do not have a website, but I went to them, found them, and just found some of the most amazing, genuine believers that I have ever seen in my entire life, and I am so glad I decided to go there. I never would have gone there based off the, uh, the way that I've done searches in the past unless I just kind of stumbled in there, but I was recommended it actually by word of mouth uh, when they were looking for a pastor and they were, I was asked to preach there and I went there and I was like, oh my gosh, you know, I love this church. So don't be afraid just because they don't have a website and they're not super modernized to go in there and check it out. You may find some of the most genuine, awesome community of believers that you have ever seen in your life there. And that leads us on to our next step, which is actually visiting. All right. So you've been reading your Bible, you've been praying about it, you've done your searching, whether it be the internet or by word of mouth around town, and you've checked out their statement of faith, now we actually have to go visit that church and see what it's all about. Sit there on a Sunday sermon, go to the Sunday message, listen to the main message preached, and you will get a really good idea of what they're all about. Because let's face it, sometimes those statement of faith that people will post on the internet or maybe hand you could be very, very general because they don't want to push anyone away and they don't want to offend anybody or something like that. So they don't put everything that they actually believe and teach on there. You know, there's some churches where I've read and it was barely a paragraph of their statement of faith. And then there's other churches that I've seen where they'll have <laughs> a 10 page document, which is not a bad thing, you know, on what they teach and believe, because then you really get a good idea about it. But essentially, you need to eventually visit that church and make sure that what they preach lines up with the Bible, lines up with what you believe the Bible is saying, what the Holy Spirit is speaking to you uh, through your prayer life and through your Bible reading. Just make sure it all lines up good. Visit that church. Now, number one, I want to say if there is if they start preaching something bogus right off the bat, it's okay to just get up and leave. My wife and I had to do that to a church one time. We went through the whole little check, you know, checked it out online. All this stuff seemed really good. And then obviously we were much younger in our faith, so we probably didn't do as much of a thorough search as we probably could have. But we ended up going and they said some pretty crazy stuff right off the bat talking about uh, tithing, how there's different levels of tithing. And depending on how much percentage you give depends on the house that you're going to get when you get to heaven, which is just totally not in the Bible anywhere. That was an instant red flag for us. We got up, walked out. Don't be afraid to do that. You don't have to sit there through the whole sermon. No, don't cause a storm and get up and go, ah, this is horrible. I'm leaving. You guys are false. You know, just quietly get up and walk out, <laughs> cross it off the list and go to the next church. Uh, but essentially, let's just say you go ahead and you sit at that church and you actually like 
what they preach and you enjoyed the service, you thought it was good, don't just go ahead and commit yourself to that church right away. The next thing that you need to do is do what I like to call the three visit rule. And I know that sounds very cheesy and maybe slightly dogmatic, but I call it the three visit rule where I will go to that church at least three times before making a bigger determination on this. So because who knows, you know, that message that they preached, maybe one, it was just a slight off day. It just wasn't something that you thought, or maybe two, they were preaching a very safe message and they didn't get into some deeper stuff. But typically, you know, it's not a rule, but I like to call it a rule. Uh, you go there at least three times, check it out multiple times before you decide to commit. Uh, I'll tell you what, from my wife and I's experience, we have gone to churches before where we thought everything was great. Uh, and then, you know, a month later, we started seeing things like, whoa, okay, um, this isn't exactly what we thought it was. And it's just, you know, it, it, a lot of time wasted off that because we didn't, you know, we ended up getting stuck there, I guess, in a way, which we weren't really stuck there. You know, it's not a cult or anything like that where they bar the doors, but, you know, you, you develop relationships and all these different things. And it's kind of hard to explain unless you've been through it, but you essentially want to have a very non-committal three visit rule where you are deciding and you don't go straight up, like, this is it. This is the church. Now, maybe the Holy Spirit speaking to you that way by all means, but still sit there and I'm saying evaluate. You don't want to just go ahead and make a commitment inside your heart based off one message or one service or one sermon. I hate to have to say that, but in today's world with the amount of denominations and different beliefs that are floating around out there, it's the smart thing to do. So go at least a few times. You don't have to do the three visit rule, but go a few times and really listen to the messages, dig into your Bible with it. And once again, not forsaking that rule of prayer, praying throughout this entire process. Now, maybe you've gone there a few times now. You've liked all the messages, everything's straight. The next thing that you want to do is talk to the members of that church. And maybe you've already been doing that as you've been visiting, but talk to the members, get a general consensus of who these members are. I talked about it in my episode of things to avoid in the church. And also, I think I talked about it in the 10 characteristics of a good church. But look at the members, talk with them, and you can get a general sense of how they act as a Christian throughout their daily lives. Now, obviously, one person is not going to be totally reflective of the church, but you can look at a majority, look at their lives. Are they living good, decent, godly lives? Are they dedicated to the Bible, or are they just there on Sundays and then they go off and do their own thing. Now, obviously, like I said, not every individual is going to represent that church and what they believe, but you can get a good idea from the general congregation of how that church is. If they're all running off, living in complete craziness of sin, it's probably a church that's not really holding people accountable or preaching the gospel well. But if they're a church that where people are generally, they're up straight, good, moral Christian people, and I say that in a human sense, then yeah, they're, they're probably preaching good stuff. Uh, and then the next thing to do is to then go and talk to the pastors. Talk to the pastors of that church, talk to the elders of that church, and then really ask them the tough questions. You know, what do you believe in this doctrine? Maybe they didn't address it in their statement of faith, or maybe you couldn't tell by their messages. Ask them those tough questions. You know, maybe you have a hardline rule where you don't believe in uh, maybe speaking in tongues or maybe playing Hillsong music or something like that, and you want to ask them those hard questions. How do you feel about this issue? How do you feel about this? How do you feel about this? Issues that are line drawers for you, issues that would prevent you from wanting to visit that church, or issues that you would want to see inside of a church. Talk to them about those different issues. Now, that's something that you're going to have to do with your spouse, with your family, with your kids, uh, and, and really go over as a family on what you really think about. And But definitely talk to the pastors and the elders. And this also kind of plays into a double rule, because if the pastor is so elusive that you can't talk to him, or they have him guarded behind so much craziness, then maybe that's not a church for you. You want to have go to a church where you can talk to the leaders of that church decently, openly. Obviously, as a, as a pastor pastors have very busy lives. 
Uh, they don't just preach sermons on Sundays. You know, they are doing weddings and funerals, and they're counseling people, and then they're preparing for their sermons. They're doing their studies. Not to mention, they also have families a lot of times, and they have to be attentive of their family. So if they can't get with you right that day or right that week, then don't get upset about it if it's, you know, a week or two down the line. But essentially, as long as the pastor is available and you are actually able to talk to one of the pastors or elders, then that's a good thing. And once again, like I said, once you get to talk to them, have a list prepared of some issues that are in questions that you have about that church and bring that up because maybe something's a deal breaker for you. Like I said, you don't want to get to this church and go there for six months and then all of a sudden they start doing something that you are insanely disagreement about and now you're just disgruntled, but you could have found out about it later on if you just would have asked them. Uh, And that leads me to the next part. Maybe now you have talked to the pastors. You have talked to the people inside the church. You've visited a bunch of times. Start going start going to the Bible studies and stuff if you haven't done so yet. Start going to the Bible studies, start going to the prayer meetings, uh, depending on how the whole hierarchy is. I know every church is kind of a little different for that, sadly. But start attending those. Uh, There you can really see what the core members of the church, and we kind of call this, it's kind of funny, and I'm not trying to sound mean when I say this, but there's your Sunday crowd church, and then there's your Wednesday crowd church. I know not every church does a Wednesday service, but a lot of them do. But You know, the Wednesday service is always going to be your more core group, your Bible study group that meets, whether they meet before church, after church, or maybe sometime midweek or something like that. They're always going to be, that's your core group right there, the people that really want to be there. Uh, Those are the people that you want to talk to, and you can really get a good sense of what that church teaches, believes, based off of those core people inside that church. So I highly encourage you, go to the Bible studies, go to that. You don't have to wait until after, you know, the the, the quote-unquote three-visit rule. You can do this while you're doing that. But I highly encourage you, go to those Bible studies, look at those core members, learn from them, talk with them, and you can get a good general sense of whether or not you think this church lines up biblically or not. The next thing to do after you do all of that, and like I said, prayer, being bathed the entire time throughout this process, uh, reading your Bible in and out, then at that point in time, you need to come to a decision of whether or not this church is going to be your church. Now, this is something that you shouldn't take lightly, and I understand how some churches, uh, they will have memberships. Maybe you want to become a member of that church. Uh, Churches do memberships differently, and I don't think that's unbiblical at all in any sort of way. Some churches will have you do a Sunday school class where they teach you, uh, they, they call it a membership class. And at my old church that I first started attending, they did this and they still do this to this day. And I don't think it's a bad thing, but they will have you really go through and they will teach you what the church teaches. So that way you really know, like, this is what the church teaches. This is what the church believes. You know, this is what we expect out of our members. And this is what you can expect out of the pastoral staff and the leadership of that church. And it, it is uh, honestly a very good thing. Now, some churches will go a little overboard and they may say things like, okay, so have you been baptized before? And you go, oh, yes, you know, I have been baptized. Okay, well, you have to get rebaptized in this church. That's a red flag for me. I instantly would walk out if that's never happened to me. But if it did, I would probably leave right there and then uh, because they might have some weird views on baptism that are not lining up with the Bible. But that's one thing that uh, is kind of like a red flag, I guess I would say, is that whole you know, you have to be baptized by our denomination or else it's not true. Like, no, dude, it's definitely not like that in the Bible whatsoever. But you, those classes are not a bad thing. So if they approach you and you were when you say you want to join the membership of that church and they say, OK, well, you need to go to a class, don't freak out. It's just their way of making sure you they know. Uh, how do I put this? It's their way of making sure that you know what you're about to get into as a member of that church. And then some churches may just not have a membership too. Uh, I I do warn on that. I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing or a make or break thing because 
but I, I'm just not in a, I, I do believe a church membership is a good thing because it shows the pastor who his sheep are and it shows who is committed to that church and who's committed to the community of believers. Sadly, I have seen people uh, take advantage of churches that don't have memberships where they will show up for a short period of time, receive some counseling, maybe get some financial money out of them, and then leave and not show back up until they need money again and then do the same thing. And it's really sad that I have to say that, but it's true. But as a church, and don't get me wrong, I believe churches should help people that are not inside the church just as much as they should help people that are inside the church. But when they're inside the church, you know that they're committed. Uh, I would be much more apt if I was running a church to help out somebody, and maybe this can get thrown out of proportion, but whatever, you know, this is what I truly believe based off of what I seen in the Bible and how they constitute a giving in the Bible. I would be more apt to help somebody in the church who I know is a solid brother or sister in Christ, and they are in desperate need financially or something like that. The church can then step in and help, and they know no matter how much they help, that person is dedicated to the church. But if you just have some random person walk off the street looking for a handout, how much are you really helping that person if they only show up for about two, three weeks, get the money, and then run? And I, and I say this not without context. I say this because this has happened, and I've seen it happen before. So that's one reason why I'm big on membership. And I didn't want to make this episode about that. But essentially, it, a membership is not a bad thing. So if you're new to Christianity, you're new to church, and you've never seen church membership and how that works, don't be freaked out by that. That's not a bad thing. Now, if all of a sudden they got you reciting these weird credos, and and when I say weird credos, there's some good creeds out there, uh, but if they got you reciting some weird stuff that doesn't line up with the Bible, then yeah, maybe you need to run. <laughs> Because sadly, you don't see a lot of what a church is about until you've really gotten more into it. You know, that's how a lot of these cults start. They sound great on the outside until you actually join up with them. And then you see, oh my gosh, this is a cult. I need to get out. <sighs> but anyways, that's about all we really have for today. Now, there's obviously more stuff that we could have talked about. But that I wanted to keep this very general because there's a lot of specifics that go into looking for a church. And I can't possibly label every single specific. But if you have any insight on this, maybe you have a good list of what you do when you're looking for a church. You know, hit us up on social media. Hit me up on Twitter, on Facebook, private message, whatever the case may be. All you got to do, by the way, is look for I Believe Now What, and we should pop up. And if you don't have any of that, you want to go ahead and email us. You can find us at IBNW podcast at gmail.com that's abbreviated for i believe now what podcast so ibnw podcast at gmail.com you can write that stuff in and we'll talk about it here on the podcast and bring that up in a section so once again i hope this episode was helpful if you want to hear more about this stuff let me know and we'll keep going over these different topics that may not be talked about nearly as much but anyways, let's go ahead and wrap this up, and I will talk to you all later. We're just going to go ahead and take this one out in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you so much for everything that you do. Uh, and Lord, when we are, we as Christians, it is important for us, we understand, to, to find a good body of Christ, to find a church that just glorifies you, Lord, because it, it's good to be around under the believer, other believers. We can help build each other up when we're in the rough times, and we can help celebrate with each other when we're in the good times, Lord. And overall, we could just come together and learn about you and give you praise and give you worship and give you glory in a mass corporate setting, Lord. Uh, thank you for this technology, Lord, for, for me just ma being able to make this episode. And it's so awesome and amazing. It's just thank you for everything that you do. Your name, your will. Amen. <laughs>